Well, good morning, New Life. How are we doing this morning? Good. So for all of you that don't know, I am not Pastor Dave. So, <laughs> um, but he did entrust me to bring the word this morning. So um, let's, we're going to welcome all of our online watchers today, everybody in-house. It's good to see you this morning. Um, I wanted to share something really quickly with you um, that I felt like uh, the Holy Spirit put on my heart. Um, I know for me, this is not what I'm used to. I'm used to being behind the scenes. That's where I thrive at the moment. But there is a time and there is a season for everything. And God works in seasons. Some of us are in a season of drought. Some of us feel like the heavens are pouring blessings on us. If that's you, um, can you pray for me after service? Because I could receive that right now. <laughs> but um, God works in seasons. And as, uh, my dad asked me probably two weeks ago um, to speak this morning. And when God has prepared you for something... The devil is going to do everything in his power to push back and to come against you and to discourage you from the calling that God has placed on your life, from the giftings that he's placed on your life. He's going to make you feel insignificant. Oh, I just got in a, a fight with my wife this morning. Anybody here today? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. <laughs> um, my kids are acting crazy, I don't know what to do, but God has a plan for you, and you and you and you, everybody here. So don't ever think that God does not have a plan for you. So, back to the whole seasons thing. Um, sometimes when you're coming out of fall, you see the snow falling. Dang it, I hate snow. Why do I live in Illinois? Why can't I live in Florida? Anyway, so... There's seasons where we're like, okay, we can see that the season's changing, but I don't want to change with it. So I'm going to run the other way. Maybe I can run backwards and go back into the season I was in instead of moving forward into the season that God has for me. So sometimes we're like Jonah. God said, go to Nineveh. Jonah said, no, I'm not going to Nineveh. I'm going to Tarshish. Or wherever he said he was going to go to. <laughs> anyway, so he gets on a boat and heads the complete opposite way of where God told him to go. So God's like, okay, have it your way. You're going to go and you're going to do your own thing. You might seem like you're blessed for a little while. You might think things are okay. But there's going to come a storm that's going to rock your boat. And Jonah said, every, they were all the... All the Guys on the ship were like, what's going on? This, we're going to die. So they're throwing everything overboard. And finally, Jonah's like, hey, guys, I think you th should throw me overboard because I'm the reason that this storm is here. God's trying to get my attention. So the storms in your life aren't always the devil. Sometimes God's just trying to get your attention and say, you're walking in disobedience. You need to go this way instead of going your own way. Anyway, hopefully somebody needed that. I needed that. That was for me. So, anyway, I'm going to do a quick recap of what Pastor uh, spoke on last week. So, does anybody remember what Pastor spoke on last week? Nope. So, so our, our sermon series is called I Declare War, Four Keys to Winning the Battle Within Yourself. So, Pastor spoke about your thoughts, taking control of your thoughts. We're not in a battle. Well, first off, you need to recognize that we are in a battle. Because if you don't know you're in a battle, that's your first problem. So we need to wake up. Like, like the young kids say, you need to be woke. <laughs> yeah, anyway, I'm an old guy now. So anyway, um, <laughs> we're, we're not in a battle with flesh and blood. But we are fighting against principalities, powers, Rulers of wickedness in high places. So, the three things that pastors spoke about that we're fighting against. Number one, anybody remember? 
The three things we're fighting against. The devil. Good job. You guys are listening. You get a star on your paper this morning. <laughs> so we're fighting against the devil. The devil is our enemy. People are not our enemy. The devil uses people to make us think that that person is our enemy. But there's forces behind what those people are saying, what those people are doing. So we have to take authority over the devil. He is our enemy. Number two, anybody remember? Things of this world. Our culture is constantly digressing into sin and wickedness and not anything that God says, they want to do the opposite, complete opposite of it. Number three, anybody remember? Yes, ourself. We Sometimes we self-sabotage. So we, we say, oh, God, I feel like God has called me to do this, but I'm not good enough. I can't do that. God's not going to allow me to do that. Well, you know what? If it's bigger than what your mind can comprehend, then that's, God is in it. Because if we can figure it out with our own mind, what do we need God for? Anyway, so uh, even though we're in a battle, we have the authority through Christ to win. Do we not? The same power, the scripture says, the same power that conquered the grave, that raised Jesus from the, de from the dead, lives inside of me and you. So even Jesus said, greater works than these will you do because I go to my Father. So Jesus raised the dead, Jesus healed the sick, Jesus cast out devils. So why do we think Oh, only pastor or only somebody in leadership can do that. No, that's not the case. Jesus called each and every one of us to do the same things that he did, and even more than that. So, uh, Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So if you want to change the way you feel, you act, the way that you think, you got to change the way that you think. Negative thoughts never lead to a positive life. So, that was not my intro. That was just the recap. So, <laughs> we're going to keep going. Um, so, I remember when I was younger, there was a lot of us kids in the house, obviously. There was nine people living in a five-bedroom house, eventually. Um, so, yeah, it, it was pretty stacked in some rooms. <laughs> Felt like barracks at times. But anyway, um, uh, we drank a lot of milk. My brother and I could chug a gallon or two of milk in a day. Easy. Like, just give me a, give me an ice cold glass of milk. Pull that, pull that glass out of the freezer, have the ice on it. Just pour that, pour that milk in there and I'll chug it. But there were times... I know I'm not the only one, so if you want to be honest, you can raise your hand. We drank out of the jug. Anybody? Yeah. God bless you. You're my brothers and sisters in Christ. <laughs> anyway, so, so sometimes you don't always check the expiration date on the milk jug. There was something going on. Obviously, we didn't drink enough milk that week. We didn't reach our quota, whatever. So it sat in there a little longer than it should have. So I just went in, opened the fridge door, started chugging. Well, once I started swallowing, Mom, did you put cottage cheese in the milk jug? No. Okay. Pardon me. <laughs> no. But anyway, so that's pretty disgusting. So there is, there's worse things than what we can take into our physical body. Jesus said in Matthew 15, 10 and 11, it's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. So, um, this is gonna be a, a little bit of a heavy sermon this morning, so um, I'll be leaving right out after in case anybody, <laughs> just kidding, I'm just kidding. Okay, so, so we are our own worst enemy at times. Sometimes we beat ourselves up, we say things we shouldn't, we think, think things that we shouldn't, and we just pound on ourselves and, and, man, I shouldn't have done that. 
But there's grace and there's mercy. And the blood of Jesus was shed for a reason. So we just have to keep that in mind and don't focus on the bad things that we've done. Um, I, I heard this quote and it says, the, word, the words that you speak can sabotage the life that Jesus died for you to have. So if you really think about that, God, you've called me to preach. Me, okay. So I've had people prophesy. I've had people speak words over me. All of it. I got it written down in voice memos, all that stuff. And for the longest time, I was like, okay, that's going to be, that'll be here for, he'll live till he's like 700 years old. He'll be the next Methuselah. So I won't have to worry about that. So, uh, so but I still, still hid the word in my heart, still read the word, still worship God. So when you're doing that, God is preparing you for that season that I talked about. And he, when it's time, he will raise you up. I'm not taking over the church. Just This is not the plan right now. I'm not, I'm not saying anything like that. But God will use you in that season. Whether you're in a season of singleness, whether you're in a season of uh, difficulty in your marriage, focus on God and he will bring you through that. So, um, the average person speaks roughly 5,000 words a day. That's average. Some of us are above average and overachievers. Some of us are below average. So, whoever that may be, more power to you. Um, our words are weighty. So, weighty means, obviously, weighing a great deal. It's heavy. Um, of great seriousness and importance. So God has given us a powerful weapon with the words that we speak. We can speak life or we can speak death. We can cut somebody down in two seconds by what we say or we can build them up and encourage them to be who God has called them to be. So uh, when we stand before God, we're going to give account for every idle word that we speak. So that's not just what we say with our physical mouth. Sometimes these can get us into trouble or this can get us into trouble. And uh, it sometimes, sometimes seeing this stuff on social media just makes me want to go run and hide in a cave. Anybody else like that? Like I've, I've said some things maybe that I regret, regret but... I'm glad that Facebook, can, you can go back and delete your comments. Um, but you've already spoken those things and you've said those things into the atmosphere. So a lot of times our words get us in trouble. Um, the things that we speak and how we live our lives has an effect on our rewards in heaven. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. But what you say and what you do will affect the rewards that you receive in heaven. Uh, Revelation 19.8 in the New King... New, sorry, I'm going to start that over. Revelation 19.8 in New King James Version says, And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. So, another way to put that verse is, what we're weaving on earth will be wearing in heaven. So really think about that. What we speak and what we say and what we do, how we represent Christ is going to directly affect whether it's our position in heaven, whether it's our mansion in heaven, whatever, but it's going to reflect our rewards that we, we receive in heaven. We will give an account for every idle word. So, Matthew 12, verse 36, in the message transla translation. I can't talk. I'm going to slow down. My mind's going 100 miles an hour, and my mouth can't keep up. Um, every one of these careless words is going to come back to haunt you. There will be a time of reckoning. Words are powerful. Take them seriously. So, wow. Like, that's, talk about weighty. That's weighty. <laughs> Every single thing that you say, whether it's to your mom, your dad, your husband, your wife, the person that greeted you this morning, I don't know, the 
the person at McDonald's that took forever to get your Big Mac. Like, all those things you will have to take an account for. So, um, in one quote, I guess, the basis of, or uh, I guess you could say the foundation and the foundational quote of this message is, if Jesus is Lord of your life, then he needs to be Lord of your lips too. So, yeah. Take a photo. You need to take a photo to remember anybody? (laughs) Um, So, I've got three points this morning on how your words impact and affect things. Number one, your words impact other people. So, it's so easy when we aren't walking in the spirit, when we're walking in the flesh, it's so easy to, if somebody does or says something that we don't like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's so easy just to cut them down so quickly with our words. And, and sometimes we just don't stop and think, I'm, I'm guilty of that. It's just easy, oh, well, you, don't, you did something I don't like, or you said something I don't like, so I'm going to cut you down. I'm going to cut you down to size. That's not how it should be. Also, there's times where we write checks that we can't cash, so to speak. We say things with our mouth. We we promise things, and we don't follow through. I've been guilty of that. But we we got to change and think of how our words impact other people. Your words are not a joke. Sometimes we joke. I mean... I was a class clown in high school. Anybody else? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm still the class clown, but it is what it is. Um, Yeah, our words impact other people. Ephesians 4.29 in the message translation says, watch the way you think. Sorry, I can't read either. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out of your mouth. Say only what helps, each word a gift. So... Anytime we're talking to people, just remember in the back of your mind after, the, after this sermon today, what I say to someone else is a gift. I want it to be a gift, a, a preciously wrapped gift. Like, I can't wrap Christmas presents very well, but I know people that can. Isabel can, so she's good at it. So if it was me, I'd just put it in a... In a brown paper bag and tie it up and call it done. But we don't want our, how many of you have seen uh, Billy Madison? Okay. Um, We don't want thing, we don't want our words to be gifts like he leaves on the porch. (laughs) Flaming bags on the porch. Sometimes that's what we do to people. We don't give them a well, well wrapped gift. We're like, okay, well you didn't do what I liked, so here you go, set it on fire. Burn on your porch. Hope you step in it. Like, no, that's not how it should be. (laughs) Um, John Watson, who was an American psychologist, he established the uh, psychological school of behavior behaviorism, like late 1800s to early 1900s. He said, "Be kind, for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle." Like, I know what it's like. A lot of you have suffered loss or gone through extreme situations. People say dumb things. They really do. They're trying to be helpful, but they say dumb things. It's like, could you please just rewind, think about what you said, and then come back to me and say something like, say something nice? (laughs) Anyway, Proverbs 18.21 in the message says, words kill Words give life. They're either poison or fruit. And then he says, you choose. God God can't put the words in our mouth and make us talk. We're not puppets. We have a free will and a choice. And that's, that's the part of the Christian walk. Sometimes it's so hard that we do have a choice. We can choose to, to speak life to somebody or we can choose to speak death and spit out poison and venom on everybody that we come into contact with. I mean, have, I've run into people where it's just like, man, you need to go back home, 
go back to bed and come out on the other side because you woke up on the wrong side of the bed today. Like, okay, can we do this over? <laughs> um, Mark Twain said, I can live for two months on a good compliment. So, obviously, the people that gave him those compliments, they were speaking life to him. And you never know, you never know who you're speaking to. It could be the next president of the United States. could be the next missionary to Uganda or some crazy country we've never heard of that they've never heard of Jesus Christ. You never know who you're speaking to. So we have to keep that in mind. Colossians 4, verse 6 in the Passion Translation. Actually, I'll read in the NLT, then I'll read in the Passion. So NLT says, let your conversation be gracious and attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Is that the only verse? I didn't write that in my notes. But okay. So the Passion Translation says, let every word you speak be drenched with grace and tempered with truth and clarity. So every word that we speak, every word that comes out of our mouth, we need to think, okay, Father, Holy Spirit, let me say what needs to be said to this person. So that's why it's so important that we walk in the Spirit, so that we can have that discernment of what needs to be said to this person, what needs to be said to this person. I mean, there's there are times for honest conversations that can get a little heavy, um, but you can still speak with truth and clarity. So, here's another, uh, another little uh, ditty that you can remember. We should be generous with praise and stingy with criticism. I'll read that again. We should be generous with praise and stingy with criticism. So if you're going to be stingy, be stingy with criticism. Be stingy with the things that you say negative to other people. Okay, so I've been walking through this for like the past two weeks, three weeks. Anybody else? Hitting right here? <laughs> okay, good. So, number two. Number one was what? Your words impact other people. Number two, your words impact the future. So, your words can alter the course. Li they can literally alter the course of history. When you think about it that way, like, that's some serious stuff. James 3, 3 through 5 in the NLT says, We can make a large horse go wherever we, wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth, and a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. I like what it says in the message. It says, a bit in the mouth of a horse controls the whole horse. A small rudder on a huge ship in the hands of a skilled captain sets a course in the face of the strongest winds. A word out of your mouth may seem of no account, but it can accomplish nearly anything or destroy it. It only takes a spark, remember? To set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke, and go up in smoke with it. Smoke right from the pit of hell. Wow. Hold on a second. I'm thirsty. And my mouth's getting dry. So, that... Um, just from reading that scripture, it was just like, bam, God smacked me right in the face. Like, sometimes we need that. Sometimes we need a little discipline, disciplinary action. God's got to lean us over his knee sometimes and give us a little whooping. Yeah. Um, when you speak to the mountain, it doesn't have a choice but to move. Right? So, this Mark... I think it's a Mark eleven twenty three, says when you speak to the mountain, it will be moved and it will be cast into the sea. So our words are powerful. He's not necessarily talking about like literal mountains, like go out to Mount Everest, 
go into the sea. No? Okay. No, he's talking about things in our life that seem mountainous, problems that look like mountains. So when we see mountains, we have to go back and we have to have God's perspective. So you remember the song, he's got the whole world in his hands? Like, so if God's got the whole world in his hands, what is a mountain to God if he's holding the whole world in his hands? Yeah, so, truth. Um, so we have to speak to our problem and not just think about it. Like, okay, hmm, okay, mountain has to move. I just thought that it needed to move. Okay, well, <laughs> Jesus said our words bring life, and we can speak to the mountain and command it to be moved. So we have to speak. We have to open our mouth and say something. We can't just think. No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> So, yeah, I mean, we got to speak to those things. And the way that you talk in a difficult situation has the ability to cause the impossible to be done. Sometimes the impossible thing being done is you continuing to believe him in the midst of the storm, even when the impossible thing you believe for doesn't happen. That's where our faith and trust in God comes in. Even... God, I'm going to trust you, and I'm going to speak life, and I'm going to declare the word that you have, even though this thing may not take place. Even though I may not see change in this wayward child, or I may not see change in the health situation of this person, I'm still going to stand firm and believe you and believe your word that you can do it, because I'm going to speak it with my mouth. Also, our, our faith isn't like a magic genie in a lamp. It's not Aladdin. We're not Aladdin. Genie, okay, you get three wishes. No, that's, that's not how it works. Even Jesus could do no mighty works where there was no faith. So we have to have faith. We have to declare the things that he says. Another, another uh, I guess a little nudge is uh, words can unlock a life you love or a life you loathe. That's how powerful our words are. So, number one, words impact other people. Number two, your words impact the future. And finally, number three, your words impact you. More than you realize. If you're walking around every day saying, I'm worthless, I'm worthless, I'm dumb. Sometimes it makes me think of, of Eeyore off of Winnie the Pooh. I'm just a little donkey, can't find my tail again. Like, some people are walking around life like that. God, I know God's called me to do great things, but I can't see it right now. Like, come on. Wake up. Get it together. <laughs> As your words are coming out of your mouth, they're changing you. That's why it's so important that, that the word says, you declare a thing and it shall be established. The things that we speak change the atmosphere. Words change the atmosphere. That's why it's so important that for our worship time, we're not singing I'm going to bring out something that my dad would say. You ain't woman enough to take my man. <laughs> I can't say I've honestly ever heard that song, but it makes me want to YouTube it just because he says it all the time. <laughs> That's why it's so important in our worship that we declare who God is and what he's done and, and how he works in our lives. So the, the, the person... The number one person that we talk to is not always our friends. It's not always our family. It's ourselves. Like, I know I have probably 10 conversations with myself in a day in my head. 
Like if I, if I talked out loud at work every conversation that I was having, um, Tony in the HR office would probably be out like taking me to uh, the psych ward at, <laughs> at Sarah Bush or somewhere. Um, but you, we've got to get sick of the voice in our head that's speaking to us. All that negative junk. It's not always the devil. Sometimes we beat ourselves up. Sometimes we give the devil too much credit for stuff he's not doing. You're like, oh, you, you kept saying that. He's like, I, w- I didn't do that, but I'll take blame for it, I guess. I mean, you're, you're not doing what God's called you to do, so it's working. So one thing we need to do is fire ourselves as our personal critic and hire yourself as your personal coach. David, in Psalms, or uh, maybe it wasn't in Psalms, somewhere, Samuel maybe. I didn't look up that scripture. But um, it says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Saul was chasing him. He had pinned him into a cave and had him surrounded. No, that's the wrong story. Back up. Anyway, I think it's when the Philistines or somebody, came, one of the Steins came in and <laughs> took, all, took all the women and children and robbed them, everything, took everything. And, and <laughs> David said, I've got to encourage myself in the Lord. Because the guys he was with, they weren't doing it. There's times we can't depend on the people around us to constantly, oh, you're so great, you're so awesome. Like sometimes we don't need that. Sometimes people just want to fluff your ego to get something that you have. Come on. Anybody? Um, But sometimes we just need to encourage ourselves in the Lord. And it's hard. It is hard. But we we just got to do it. Learn to speak life to yourself, not just to other people. Some of the people I've seen that are some of the greatest encouragers to others are some of the hardest people on themselves. And I've done that. I can encourage people. You did a great job today. Great job on the drums, Zeth. You did awesome. Everybody give Zeth a hand. You did a great job on the drums today. But then when it comes to me or somebody gives me a compliment, I'm like, oh, it was Jesus. <laughs> Did Jesus make you practice for 12 years to learn how to play? <laughs> no, no. Sometimes we can take credit for things that we've done. We're made in the image of God. So I don't know where I was going that. Anyway, so um, let's see, where am I? Psalm 43, verse 5 in the NLT says, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. So it kind of, David, in Psalms, David kind of looks a little bipolar. Because in one, one, one half of the verse, he's like, oh, my enemies are coming against me. They're going to cut off my head. They're going to kill me. But I will rejoice in the Lord. And sometimes, we, sometimes I feel that way. It's like, okay, it feels like the whole world's against me, but you know what? If God be for me, who can be against me? And that's what we've got to do. We've got to encourage ourselves in the Lord. Stop listening to your fear and put some faith in the air. Think about that for a second. Yeah. So they did a study on some people somewhere (laughs) and they they studied them and and just had them speak negative things and it it affected how they walked how they talked how they lived but once they started being positive and speaking positive things all of a sudden they started getting better one of the most important things that words that you could say today is thank you Thank you, God, for giving me life this morning. Thank you, God, for waking me up. Thank you, God, that I have all my fingers and my toes, that I can walk, that I can talk, that I can, my lungs work, that I can breathe in the air that you've created. Thank you, God, for the people that you've surrounded me with, that encouraged me. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing in my life. That's one of the, one of the most important words you could say is thank you. Gratitude is important. Psalm 
uh, 95 verse 2 in the New Living says, Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. Psalm 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, In everything, I guess this is a different translation. I'll read this one. Uh, Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. The New King James says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So don't just think it. Speak it. we got to get past this battle in our mind, just like Pastor was talking about last week. If we can push through this thing that's in between our ears, that gets in the way so many times, and speak life into our dead circumstances, there's no telling what God can do. So Psalm 107 verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Not just walking around, so, 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 like, okay, you're taking a little too literal, but if, I guess if that works. <laughs> it, me- it means speak the things that God's done in your life. Be thankful, be grateful for what he's done in your life. It could change your life. It really could. They also uh, have done a study that uh, antidepressants boost the dopamine and serotonin in your body, but gratitude does both. When you live a life of thankfulness and gratitude, you may not need antidepressants anymore. So that could save you some money, some time. Like, if we would just turn to God first instead of everything else, we'd save ourselves a lot of time and heartache and everything else. And I was, I was talking to somebody this morning. It's like, it just seems like, We're so quick to, um, how do I want to word this, to say yes to everything else, but when it comes to God, let me think about it. I need to pray about it. (laughs) Like I said, I'll be running off stage after service. (laughs) But it's, it's true. We've got to get our priorities in alignment. I know I'm kind of, kind of going all over the place, but I'm hoping that it's connecting with you. Because um, when our priorities are out of line, God, God can't bless what he didn't approve of. Like, sorry, but when you, when you walk in the flesh, you'll get the things of the flesh. Anyway, won't step on your toes anymore, hopefully. Um, Research shows that something as simple as writing down five things you're grateful for once a week can boost your happiness by up to 25%. So why don't we make this week a week of gratefulness? Let's make the next week a week of gratefulness. And the next week, and the next week, and the next week. And just go back and journal where you started from, and once you go down the road, you can see, like, wow, this is something I struggled with three weeks ago, but after doing this, I'm not struggling with it anymore. Like, it's amazing. It's so simple, but we make it so hard sometimes. The, the following Jesus is really not hard, but our flesh and our will wants to get in the way. And that's where the battle comes in. That's why we have to fight this battle against ourselves. Is usually we hit ourselves the hardest sometimes. <clears throat> so let's use our words to bless and encourage others, to shape our future, and to build ourselves up.